only use it on um, on my implant. I, the good things I can implement what I what I publish. I can practice what I preach in my practice for for our small town that I love and I love every patient that's come and enters my doors. I love everyone who come and enter my doors. So, so that, excuse me, that, so yes. you chemically treat your implants or before, I mean? Yes, so you have two ways you can change the surface uh, chemistry in energy. Um, we don't utilize any material to add on the abutment. I use ultraviolet light in plasma to irradiate the surface. And that's how I change it. So I change the contact angle. I decrease the contact angles by improving the energy. So you know what's the plasma state of the matter? So kind of like the sun, the power of the sun in the palm of your hand. All the sun is plasma. Definitely I don't have nuclear reaction here right. or anything like that. I don't have a fusion, a hydrogen fusion manufacturer here. No, what we do is just the gas. We, we apply um, electrical current to the gas, the, the room, room gas, or you can use oxygen, whatever gas you want. And then you can separate the electron and protons and they will kind of bombard the implant surface and um, decrease the contact angle and increase the energy of the surface. It's not hot, it's not, it's not hot, it's, it's tested. I'm not the first one using it. Right. Um, it's been used in Italy now, it's been used in Germany. Sure. There's companies manufactured from Germany, but I decided to get it from Silicon Valley. The technology is out there, right. just to kind of get it to us in the dental field. And I think we are just such a small business, and I offer my help, but maybe someday we will have it in the same. But I know if you want to have that in your office, I'll be happy to help and get you the contact information. Okay. So now is, this, is on, um, this is on the left. I utilize healing abutment okay, um, on a second stage surgery. Now I remove it. And this is how is the surface look like. Now when it's pink, it's epithelial. When it's bleeding, it's the, yeah. So uh, it's so when I have a bleeding, that's a good thing. That's interaction between the transmucosal abutment. And now I tear that when I remove the healing abutment. But I wanna see with my eyes, because I don't believe in, unless I see it, and seeing is believing. I, the same patient, my patient Isaac, we did it again. Now is, we took the impression and everything. Um, now I put um, the healing abutment after decontamination and irradiation, make that surface hydrophilic again, and then I place it. Okay? This is on the day of delivery of the final crown. It's 31, that's with all the way to the back. You can see the epithelium is grow, that pink part. But I still have some attachment. Actually, you can see the tear in this point. I think my laser is not going to shine on a, on a plasma TV. But can you see the tear of the tissue? So you can still get some type of attachment. But it's not the same like the first one. If I keep my abutment, I will have that good seal, but I have to only utilize one abutment. So there is um, there's a company, Nobel, came out now with the transmucosal part uh, to, um, it's called one on all or something. So you when you place the implant, you put that transmucosal part, then you restore on a tissue level. So that part is not going to be disturbed anymore. So that's, this is not something from, you know, just me telling you, it's a whole industry working on to come. This is the future. So if the company picking up a concept from literature and start to manuf manufacture and they want to sell, they have a good reason. So this is the future. Because we know osteointegration, integration we are successful. The problem is soft tissue integration. Then we kind of 
hey, we blame our hygienist. We send our patient to the hygienist again and again. Fix it for us. Do your magic. My question to you, doctor, is yes. why do you think the very first time you have a more attachment than the second time? Because the uh, disconnect and reconnect. So when I disconnect the first time, I tear that. I open the wound again. Right. Then it, the epithelium is going to start to grow and the proliferation is going to happen. It's just a wound healing. Okay. Yeah. Um, do you try to put it something hydrophobic and see if there's no attachment at all? Um, if you have, you will get some attachment, not the same, like, because we have a Schwab study on the uh, titanium oxide, you get attachment. Actually, look at your, if you're placing implant and placing the abutment right away, if you have a good stability and you decided to go and place the healing abutment, and the tissue heal nicely, and, and you, if you remove your healing abutment and you see bleeding, that's a good thing. Not the bleeding like it's bleeding, right. okay, and you drown it in the blood. If you see it red, you have attachment. But the problem, you remove it now, it's gone, and it's not gonna come back. Yeah, that was my question. How come the, how do you create the first place, and how come it's not coming back again? Since, you know, you, you had an open flap done, you put an immediate implant, you know, and you put a, a blood in, healing blood in there, so the attachment appeared from somewhere, right? So how come it's not going to appear the second time again? It's, it's most, I, but I'm sorry. We know it's not going to it's gonna yeah. come back again. So sure. it's gone. But if you have hydrophilic surface, all what I'm trying, when I try it, I found some attachment. I show you a picture. Right. No, it but nice. remember, time also play a role. Because you tear that wound again, right? We have an open wound. You want to take your impression, copy and place it, take your impression, do your scan if you're doing digital, um, decontaminate your abutment, right? And don't allow saliva to get in, keep the area clean, and change the surface chemistry and energy, make it hydrophilic, put it back, and that's what we did here for Isaac. Sound like we were faster than the, the epithelium, because all that done within 15, 20 minutes, but Yes, if it's gonna, the patient's gonna be for hours, and you know, saliva so gets in, that attachment is gone, gone for good. Thank you. Did they answer your question? Yeah. Thank you. Doctor. Thank you. So you know, I strive for excellent, and we got to the clinic parts. So I promise you, this is your, your weekend's gonna start soon. <laughs> so, um, all what I'm trying to say that we have also, beside everything I. We, we talk about that we have to treat the abutment the same way like we treat the implant. So when we when we doing the surgery, we all good and we have a drapes and we disinfect all the surface, everything clean, no saliva attached to the implant. I hope before it's kind of go and we get osteointegration. Now is when it comes to the abutment. The abutment is coming from the lab. We don't know what's happened from hand to hand. It's fall on the floor, oh, put some alcohol on it, clean it. That's not gonna work. Actually, there are some studies been published that some of the peri-implantitis type of bacteria or microorganism, it exists on our skin, too. So it's manipulation of us touching the implant with our hands. So I know it's, it's very hard. <coughs> I wish somebody can create like something to hold the abutment for me, and I'm going to number 15, and with the cover screw, and this is when I wish my hand is smaller. It's the only time I wish when my hand is small, and I'm gonna go to the patient's throat, and the implant place a little bit toward the mesial. You have to go a little bit further, and what is my shorter driver? <coughs> oh, it's not ready, doctors. We only have a long one. Thank you very much. Okay. <laughs> so, and now is the abutment is gonna go right away like magnetic and it's gonna oop, right in the place. So it is not an easy thing. I'm not saying this is easy, but let's see if we can do it on patients, right? Let's see if we can implement what we learn. Because that's the goal. There is I'm not spending my time just studying for just, you know. We have to use this and to help our patient. And we want to help them 
because we are here in Visalia in, in our, you know, this county. We want to help our patient here, you know. So this is my patient, Carlos. He's a great patient. He's been with me for, I don't know, 10 years. So number eight, fail. Okay. Oh. Do you see the tissue level? That's higher than number nine. Okay. So I already have a problem. Do we have a problem here? Okay. So this is how I practice or I used to practice. I still do that as you know when it's indicated, but but I'll show you how I switch the way I think. So connective tissue graft, socket preservation, just the normal stuff that you guys do every day. It's healed. Okay, let me say here, let me pause and say I'm great at this. <laughs> what did I do different? Nothing. It's the biological response. Patient healed good. I didn't do anything, guys. I did every dentist do the same. If you are a specialist or general dentist, in the aesthetic zone, you do tissue graft and you do socket preservation procedure. I know you guys all assessed, you've seen it, you know it, you read it. Okay. But that's not my point. Okay, so I want to have this protocol efficient. So I did a papilla sparing incision. I placed my implant. Okay. High torque, great. Some PRF, some I collected the bone. I placed temporary abutment. I did immediate provisional, provisionalization. Okay, and you can see that this is temporary. You can see the tissue saying like, who's that? Things on the top of me. Okay, but you know it's healed, and you can see some bleeding point. Just a rubber dam and resin, nothing special. You get that bleeding point the first time. Okay, if it's clean surface and biocompatible. Okay, if you guys remember when we used to do those of eight pontic with the bridges, you get to bleed and you remove this bridge after ten years sometime, and you see those of eight pontic bridge been wild. You can see that bleeding surface. You have attachment underneath. And don't tell me patient was cleaning underneath that bridge and using threaders and going through it. I don't, I don't think, so. you know, if they done it twice in a year, it's good. <laughs> You'll be happy. Yeah. But that bleeding and that bridge survives with that Ovid bond because we have some seal. So we did the normal stuff and, you know, cementation. So I use some. Um, quick jig with piped uh, materials inside, then I'm going to get the cement. And the thickness of the cement is going to be the amount of shrinkage. That's how I control my uh, cement thickness. Or one of the protocols. Oh, let me go back. Do you see the, um, the abutment implant level? I got bone loss. Do you guys remember? I placed it crystal, crystal level. Now I have bone loss. Yeah. I don't? You guys see it? Okay. Well, I think this is, can you read that day? This is 2015. I just seen um, Carlos. May 2nd, 2019. Now is my crystal bone is the same level. What's happened? Is the bone grow? It did in this case. Do I know? I don't know. It's biological response. My patient is healed well. This is the picture we just took in May. Nice result. Okay, but maybe a little bit lucky. Great patients, good tissue. I don't know. I don't have explanation. Another patient is more complex. Use that partial. Literally, the partials have, and you know, press the tissue, and you get great bone loss. Measure releasing periosteum. 
hog stain, you know, bone block, two fixation screw, and salting the bone to get osteogenic cell closures. Look at the tissue. It's healed, right? Look at the block bone. It's bleeding. It's, it's alive and well. Okay. We place the implant now. High torque again. Now this is the connective tissue. I kept it attached and to the interior so I can get supply. Then I tunnel it and I utilize it again on temporary abutment. Why is it on temporary abutment? I didn't know I can place final abutment. Because if I place final abutment, how I'm gonna restore it? I'm gonna pack a cord and get the seal, then pack a coal, uh, pack mm -hmm. cord, maybe four cord, mm -hmm. five cord, and hopefully I get enough to pick up the margin piece. I didn't know better. Again, this is abutment replica to control the cement. I don't want any cement underneath that, right? Still bleeding. You want cement? Where's my hygienist? Do you want cement underneath the implant? No. Okay, but you have we have to do some steps to prevent that. Healing. Nice porcelain work before and after. You know, I got that um, by coron coronary advancing the club. I got the full coverage on the canine. That was a nice bonus. Right? Um, wasn't very happy with the tissue. What should I do? Nothing. I'm just going to allow complete maturation. Remember what I told you guys in early? You trust that you have, you did the right things, you have the connective to show the read. It's going to work, it's going to take time. And you can see here the thing, epithelialized and currentized. Okay? It's a nice result. But how I can practice here when I don't have anything? No bone, nothing. Very thin bone. Yeah, I cannot do one abutment one time here, can I? I have to build that bone. I cannot do any soft tissue management. Maybe I can do some, you know, grafting. Maybe some tissue, connective tissue graft. But oh. we have to do this. We have to build the bone first. Because if we don't have the bone, we cannot place the implant. It's not possible. So I'm not, we cannot still practice in the future. We have to practice in the present. So tissue management, the provisionals, yeah. Nice porcelain work. But I'm lucky because the patient was happy, but look where is the tissue. It's if the patient have a high smile line, not well informed, we have a problem, right? But they should want them for her, but she was very happy. Do you do two surgeries? Or there, did you do a tissue surgery second time also? I think I did. Because what you're seeing here was, I think it's... titanium, titanium, titanium mesh. Mesh you have when you remove it, did you do another one? Another, can you go back on this? Every screen? time, I'm going to open a flap, expose the bone, I'm going to put some bone in there. Every and time. And you put a member, right? Reserve bone there yes. after that? So every time you're going to expose the, the bone, you're going to get bone loss. So at least I'll place like a veneer bone. So every time you're going to open those big flaps, you're going to get bone loss automatically. So every time I'm going to open, or I have to open, I, I don't open because I want you, not because I want to show how much bone I did, right? And I say, hey. But, um, but you have to put some bone. At least that's how I practice. So this is, I decided to change the way I practice. Or I try here. I have a couple of cases, I think nine cases. It's not easy, but it's doable. Even with, with me, with my small office, but I have a great team too. They are very supportive. I know they work on every cases of these, right? You, Crystal, probably remember all of them, right? So 
I utilize uh, here, I wanted to do the one abutment moon concept. I didn't have hydrophilic surface then. I didn't have that machine. I only had it for a year and a half. Um, but at least I said, OK, I want to do immediate placement. I want to do one abutment, one ton. Immediate professionalization, no loading. No loading. Truth in one day, that does not mean loading. That, that does not mean like bending iron with your teeth. Okay. So yes, when you, you know you utilize in PO, PA, so you want to do right, atraumatic extraction. And when you want to do something, everything go wrong. <laughs> right? Tooth came out in pieces, but hey, I think the surgery took less than the implant less than the extraction. Um, but the tooth is out. We clean, we place that hydrophilic implant. I didn't have the machine to change it, but at least I would say, hey, I want hydrophilic implant because I want to reduce the risk. I placed the final abutment. This is same x-ray. This is Maria. If you guys remember, I placed the implant crystally. How are you, doctor? Good, how are you? Good to have you. So this is one up, uh, this is the abutment level uh, impression Kobe. And I did the jig here, veneer grafting, you do all the things, we put PRF and we place, we place the provisional. So think about it in the biologi biological response of the body. The socket is sealed. The body is, does not need to do anything, right? Okay. We place PRF, better, better healing. We place one abutment, so I'm going to have interaction between the collagen on abutment level, not on the bone level, right? I'm going to have that insertion of collagen fibers against my abutment. I'm going to have more cells, at least around my implant, okay? So that, I think that was Friday, and this is how it looked on Monday. That's nice, right? I must have done something right here to have that normal spawn of the tissue. And I show you guys over 2016, 2017, 2018, bone level fallout. So we have to use an anatomical shape type of tooth. You have to have the abutment deep down a little bit, two millimeters, one millimeter and a half, because you have to build that immersion profiles. But what's root is going to be root. What's crown is going to be crown. But look at that tissue. It's look the same. I promise you, it's look the same. I see Maria's. It didn't change. So I want to do that more. So this is my patient, Monica. So um, this is more documented case, so you can I want you to know how we utilize the one abutment, one time concept, because that abutment is going to go in there. It's not going to come out. We're not going to backboard or anything. So we already have a master models okay, at this level. Okay. We took impression. We're going to open a flap. We're going to place the implant. We're going to get high torque. It's important to have primary stability. Now you're going to place impression coping. You're going to use low shrinkage materials of your choice. And I'm going to do, this is implant level impression coping. So I'm going to place on the first tooth a little bit of materials. I'm going to allow that to shrink. I'm going to move my tips to the other tooth. I'm going to place a little bit. I'm going to allow that to shrink. I'm going to put a little bit on the implant. Then I'm going to connect everything. So if you can change the tip and start again, allow that to shrink completely. You get the shrinkage more accuracy. You're going to connect implant replica. Now you're going to utilize that jig on the master models. And what you're going to do, you're going to hollow that models. And you're going to draw the tissue where you want. Okay? I already started with a lot of tissue. So I know I can get the result I want. This is just I use. Um, Resin pattern to fixate the implant replica to the bottom of the master model. Just a small jig, thermoplastic material to this is my abutment. I'm going to customize it. 
Can I keep it clean? Can I fabricate the temporary? I'm gonna place the temporary. The tissue's gonna heal. This is the final result. It's a nice tissue. So from the biological point of view, we have a good response. If we know how to work with the body, we're gonna get a good heal. So I think what's important for me is that we all young, and if we want to get the wisdom, <coughs> we don't have to get old. We can just be in your chair. That's my favorite chairs, educations. So I want you all to be proud of being here today on a Friday night. I'm impressed. So I know all of you guys successful, and a lot of people see that top part. But I want to tell you that I know about the risk you take, the failures, the doubt, the criticism that you receive, sometimes from very close people to you, the discipline that you demonstrate, the sacrifice that you give, given, the rejection that you receive, the late night study, the hard work you've done, and that's who you are, the success that we see. Thank you guys, have a great Memorial's weekend, and thank you for being here. I will stick around for any question or any concern. I'll be happy to share with you the presentation. We didn't want to keep it long for the weekend. Well, I was super fast. Really good. <laughs> I was trying to time myself at home and I kind of go through it. It took me three hours. <laughs> <laughs> Must be the coffee I take. <laughs>